Hey guys, Joe from the Crazy New York Driver Show, Friday, November 1st, 2013. Thanks for stopping by. And hopefully today, this video will clear up a lot of things that are going on related on eBay. eBay has been in a state of turmoil and flux for the last month or two. Okay? We really have a lot of ground to, to cover right now, so let's get right into it. I would like to say a few positive things first, if I may. Firstly, I actually had a slight increase in sales this week. Now the question is, why? Is it because of something eBay did, or is it because of something I did? Well, we'll get to that. Okay? I'd also like to thank you guys who PM'd me and contacted me with your experiences, and some of you guys who sent me videos. If you guys ever have an experience or run across a video you think is pertinent and important to what's going on in our community, hook me up, PM me, let me know, and I can add it for discussion on Friday's show, which is what I'm about to do right now. Hopefully you guys saw the video I made Monday. I made an unscheduled tutorial about how to do an eBay sell a search. It's a very basic concept, but believe it or not, there are a lot of newbies that don't know how to do it. People ask me to make newbie videos, you know, how to do this and how to do that, and I have no problem doing that. However, I made that video because of a video that was sent to me by one of my friends that he spotted over the weekend. Here's what happened, because it opens up a very interesting situation. A person apparently made a video on Sunday directed specifically at me. In the video, the YouTuber attempted to do a seller search on my items by typing my name in the general item field instead of using the advanced search, which is the way to do it. Obviously, nothing's going to come up that way. That didn't surprise me. He then typed in the name of my competition, one guy, all right? And his items did come up. And I did think that was weird. But the point the YouTuber was trying to make, in his opinion, he was saying that eBay was punishing me, okay? Now, right away, I said, that's a fallacy, because I cannot see eBay restricting free trade in such a discriminatory manner. However, he did bring up a very important point that the other person's items were being shown when he typed that person's name in the general search field. So I decided to do some investigation, deep investigation, before I went on camera and talked about it. So what I did was I first made the video to show everybody how to do the proper search. That being said, I took it upon myself to pick on some other, some other eBayers who are in the same business as me, and I typed their name into the general search field, and none of them came up. However, the one person's name, and only the one person's name, did in fact come up. Now, let me show you these names, because we're going to need to go through some of this. Let's start with me. My eBay Motors Ideas Hubcap Joes, okay? Now, if you all would open your browser window, your second browser window to eBay, and just type in the eBay, in the general search field, not the correct way, the advanced on the right, just like you're gonna search for an item. Just type my name in, or if you'd rather, your name, your eBay username, or your friends, and search that way, and it will not come up, because eBay has not designed it to come up that way. All right? Once you've accomplished that, I want you to type in this name. Hubcaps underscore plus. His items will come up. And this is what the YouTuber was ranting on. He was saying that eBay was basically giving this guy preference over me. And while it's not true that they're favoring him per se, it is true that through some kind of a quirk, his stuff comes up when nobody else's does. So I decided 
that's pretty important, I think. I want to find out what's going on myself. But I want to get the, the exact information before I go on camera. So, I called eBay. And they sent me to the Philippines. And I explained to the Filipino operator what was going on. And she, of course, could not understand me. She's telling me that in order to do a search, I got to click the advanced tab on the top right. I said, yes, I understand that. That's the correct way to do it. But humor me. Let's conduct an experiment one-on-one, -on -one, I said to her. I want you to do it the way I'm telling you. Type my username in, in the search field right now, and tell me what happens. Nothing came up. I said, now type in hubcaps underscore plus. And bang, it revealed his items. So she was flabbergasted. She says, well, let me put you on hold and let me get back to you in two minutes. Two minutes turned into 22 minutes. But that was time well spent. I don't, don't mind a bit. Now the explanation she provided, and I like help from some of you code slingers out there. Jump in here on this. According to her techie guys, the fact that he is an underscore in his name is telling the eBay search bots that these, this is not one name, this is two names, hubcaps and plus, and therefore it's pointing directly to this particular guy's items. This is definitely, definitely a fallacy with the eBay search bot. So what, what I have to tell you is, let's say you want to open up an eBay account tomorrow, a brand new one. Let's say for the argument's sake you sell batteries and you wanted to use the name Batteries Plus, okay? If you registered with that name, it would not come up in search, just like mine, just like yours, just like everyone else's. However, if you did it this way, Batteries underscore Plus, according to my research and what I found out, yours would come up in the search results. It would be skewered in your favor. And to go back to this YouTuber's video, he made a point, he said, well, you know, Joe, I think because you're paying for an eBay store, your stuff should come up when somebody searches in the general title field. And you know something? I agree. Anybody that's spending the extra money for an eBay store should get their stuff mass marketed and get a little extra zing, I think. All right? However, it is not set up that way right now. So again, back to you code slingers. Could you guys comment below? I know I've seen some comments on some of the other videos about exactly what's going on, but I know I'm missing out on one key point. So comments are welcome from the code slingers about this really weird snafu with the eBay search engine. Okay? All right, let's move on to the next topic more about the new Cassini search engine. I have been giving out advice lately of what to do to optimize the chance of your stuff being seen. All right? I have been saying the following and I still am going with this. I am still going with shorter titles. I had one of my subscribers write to me a couple of days ago. She said that she called the Philippines and the Fil Filipino operator told her to use longer titles. Yet, I've had other people say that it's better to use shorter titles because the longer titles will confuse the Google search bots. And that, to me, seems sensible. So I'm going with shorter titles, okay? Also, use black font only. I've been told this, all right? Do not embed any pictures in your listings. If you're selling an item, use eBay picture services. You get 12 pictures for free. Do not embed anything in the eBay listing for the simple reason the iPhone users are going to get all screwed up with that. That's a fact. I've been told that many times years ago. Also, banners. Now the jury is still out on this. And I'll tell you why. I've always used banners. For years I've used them and never had a problem until just recently, the last month or two. So I've been doing an experiment. I've been 
taken down all my stale listings, I've been redoing them from scratch, description, title, pictures, and I've been eliminating the banner. The weird part is, several items that sold over the last few days had a banner. They were ones that I hadn't retooled. So, again, with banner, without banner, I don't know. The jury's still out on that. I really think eBay needs to step up now and come up with a list of do's and don'ts. This nonsense has gone on for two months. The only reason we're getting as far as we have is because we're all pooling our knowledge. And that's great. We're helping each other. But that shouldn't be. It shouldn't have to be. eBay should either make a video or send one of those selling newsletters out to everybody saying, for optimal search results, do these things. Bang, bang, bang. And do not do these things. Bang, bang, bang. End of story. It would be so simple. But you know why they're not doing it? I don't think they really know what to say. Several people have been getting conflicting advice from eBay representatives on the phone. All right? The only thing I can advise you, for the most up-to-date eBay advice and PayPal advice, right here. Watch these videos and read the comments of the good YouTubers, good eBayers below, and your question will hopefully get answered. Okay. Another thing that may or may not help. I have not implemented this or tried it. I only read this comment this morning. Somebody suggested you use hashtags in the description of your item. Such as hashtag eBay. They're big, as you know, on Twitter. I am not a real big Twitter guy. I used it for a while. And it was very helpful. And it still could be helpful under the right conditions. Will it help in search? I don't know. Again, I am paranoid about confusing these eBay search bots and the Google search bots. And I don't know, you know, maybe some of you guys use hashtags if you do. And it's working for you, comment below. I'd like to know about it. So would everybody else for that matter. Okay. Switching the topic slightly, I want to talk about abuse of the eBay contact system. This has been a long-running gripe. There are two types of abuse I've encountered over the years, and I've had both of them this week. And quite frankly, it pisses me off. Number one. I was selling an item in a quantity listing a brand new hubcap for $49.95 with free shipping. There is a picture of one item. The auction says you are buying one item, but you may buy more than one if you want. Shipping is free, etc. So this guy writes to me and he says, you're charging $49.95, but am I getting just one or am I getting all four? The guy obviously lacks reading skills. But I can accept that because I, I'm glad he contacted me first before committing and then wanting his money back when he gets just one. So, okay. His question was not unreasonable. So I answered him. I, I said, when I answer a question, I always click to publish it right to the listing so other people can see it. So I used his whole entire ID. Dear John Smith, his eBay user ID. Dear John Smith, this listing is for only one item for $49.95. You can see there is one in the picture. The auction clearly says one. The item is a brand new factory item and I'm offering free shipping. Thank you for your interest. Now, up till now everything's fine. He really has no reason to write back to me. except to write back and say thank you for clarifying that. He has no reason to write back and say something nasty, which he did. He writes back, that's too damn expensive. I can get one in a junkyard for five dollars. Five dollars. The shipping alone costs fifteen dollars. 
you know, that's what really upsets me is when people have to write back a nasty comment like that through the eBay contact system. It's just unwarranted and it's uncalled for and it's happening too often. Another thing that's just as irritating, and it happened again. I had a Chevy hubcap listed. A guy writes to me, hey, I see you're selling a Chevy hubcap for $50 with free shipping. I have four of these. Do you want to buy mine? That's abuse of the contact system, selling off eBay. I wrote back to him, no, I don't want to buy yours. Stop being so lazy and list them on eBay. That is something that only happens in eBay Motors. I would like, I put this out to you guys. Have any of you ever had that happen in any category except eBay Motors? I really want to know. It's never happened to me with a toy truck in my life. Never happened with a card. Speaking of toy trucks, before I forget, are any of you going to the toy convention in South Jersey or in Pennsylvania? this week and next week. Anybody gone? I can't make the one this week, of course. I have something to do. Next week is a maybe. If anyone's going, I want to know about that. There's going to be some Hess toy truck people there. I want to know if you're going to be there. Maybe we can do get together and do a video. I'm not going to swear I'm going. I got a couple of friends who are going and want me to go with them. So more on that as it comes up. Now, my question to you guys. Since last week, have your sales improved at all? Have they gone down? Has eBay sent you any messages specifically geared toward you? Several people have written to me and told me they got messages from eBay. I got one myself that told me I had several items that needed to be changed to increase the item specifics. Which I thought was weird. Also, have you had any interaction with either eBay or PayPal representatives on the phone? I called both this week. And here's where I'm going to show you night and day. I called PayPal 8 o'clock at night. Not with a complaint, but I needed help with something. I was working on quarterly reports and I needed to know how to do a certain function that I couldn't quite get. And I've done it before and I forgot it. So I called up the representative. She was in Arizona. Real nice lady. Very helpful. I explained my problem. She listened to me. She was even stymied. So she had to put me on hold for a couple of minutes, but she came right back and she told me exactly what I had to do to generate these reports. Took a couple of minutes, bang, quick. She didn't rush me off the phone. There was no language barrier. She chatted with me and it was great. And I said to her, I am so thankful that PayPal has their representatives in the United States. It helps so much. And we talked a little more. I even told her about the crazy New York driver show and invited her to watch some of the videos. And I told her I'd give her a shout out. So thank you for your help. And it was a pleasure working with you. But I even told her I would love to see eBay follow suit. eBay and PayPal are connected. It's brother and sister or man and wife. Why can't eBay have their customer service in the USA. I am stymied by that. Yes, yes, I know it's cheaper overseas. I'll give you that. I give you that. But you get what you pay for, okay? On that note, I'll leave you. Let's rehash, okay? All comments welcome. I want to hear about your experiences in the last week. Have your sales increased on eBay at all? Have they stayed the same or decreased? Have you been contacted by eBay or PayPal? Did you contact them? And if so, what was your experience? Do you have anything you want to add? And for you code slingers out there, talk to me about that hubcaps underscore plus situation and why he's the only person 
on eBay that's being picked up by the search bots in the general search field. And a side note, on my second channel, I plan to make a video about school bus stories next. That was the one that was voted on the highest. I doubt I'll have time later. If I don't, it won't be till at least Monday or Tuesday because I can't do any videos on the weekends. I'm Crazy New York Driver. You're not. Thanks for watching. Thanks for keeping this a successful partnership. The place to come for your eBay and PayPal news, updates, and stories. I'm going to have a sip of Gatorade as I say goodbye and fade off into the clouds.